Hi, welcome back. Today we're diving into the world of hemorrhoids, so this guy is going to have a more prominent position today. We're going to be exploring every aspect of this common but often misunderstood condition. I'm Dr. Suj, an NHS GP and emergency doctor, and I've been seeing many more people with hemorrhoids, also known as piles, recently. So I thought I'd make this video, and I'm going to give you everything you need to know about hemorrhoids. I'm going to talk about the definition of hemorrhoids, who it affects, and the risk factors that lead to you developing it. Um, the potential outcomes, and then the treatment options. So grab your favourite snack and get ready to learn everything you need to know. On reflection, the snack might not be what you want when we're discussing poo. Let's start with the basics. What exactly are hemorrhoids and just how common are they? Hemorrhoids, also known as piles, are vascular structures. This means that they're small blood vessels that are in the anal canal and they have a crucial role in controlling stool. When these blood vessels become swollen and inflamed, it results in hemorrhoids. But how prevalent are they? Research suggests that hemorrhoids are more common than you might think, affecting millions of people worldwide. So if you're dealing with them, you're certainly not alone. Now, let's get into the nitty gritty. What causes these pesky hemorrhoids? Here are the risk factors. Number one, straining during bowel movements. Have you ever had a bathroom session where you had to push really hard? That's a prime recipe for hemorrhoids. The pressure from straining can lead the blood vessels down there swelling up, causing those pesky forbidden berries. Number two, constipation and diarrhea. It's a bit of a catch-22. Chronic constipation can lead to straining during bowel movements, while persistent diarrhea can be a constant irritant to your sensitive rear end tissues. Both can increase the risk of hemorrhoids. Number three, pregnancy. Pregnancy brings about hormonal changes and extra pressure on the pelvic area, making expectant mothers more prone to hemorrhoids. Number four, obesity. Carrying those extra pounds can affect more than just your waistline. Obesity can squeeze the blood vessels in your pelvic region, raising the risk of developing hemorrhoids. Number five, aging. As we age, our body's tissues go through some changes. Unfortunately, the connective tissues in the rectum and anus tend to weaken, making them much more susceptible to hemorrhoids. It's like the wear and tear of time finally catches up with you. All right, let's now move on to how you can spot hemorrhoids and what their prognosis looks like. Number one, rectal bleeding. One of the most common and telltale signs of hemorrhoids is rectal bleeding. If you ever notice bright red blood on your toilet paper or floating ominously in the toilet bowl after a bowel movement, it's time to consider hemorrhoids as a possible culprit. Number two, persistent itching and discomfort. Hemorrhoids can be downright annoying. They can lead to persistent itching and discomfort, making you feel like you're in a never-ending itch fest. Number three, pain or discomfort. While internal hemorrhoids might not hurt that much, external ones can deliver sharp, shooting pains, especially during bathroom time, or when you're just trying to sit down comfortably. Number four, swelling or a lump. If you ever feel a soft lump or notice swelling around your back door, don't panic. It might be an external hemorrhoid making an appearance. But what's the prognosis here? With proper care and management, hemorrhoids can often improve and resolve without major complications. However, severe or chronic cases may require more extensive treatment. You've got the symptoms, now what? Let's delve into how you can tackle those pesky hemorrhoids. Let's start with the basics. Lifestyle changes can work wonders, and these include increasing your fibre intake, staying well hydrated, and most importantly, avoiding straining during your bowel movements. Your back muscles will thank you. Remember, you need to be having at least 30 grams of fiber each day. And a study from Imperial College London found that for every 10 gram increase in fiber intake, you reduce your bowel cancer risk by 10%, which is an astounding figure. A quick trip to the drugstore or chemist or pharmacy can lead you to creams, ointments, and suppositories that can offer you temporary relief from itching, swelling, inflammation, and pain. If conservative methods aren't cutting it, there are several minimally invasive procedures available. So these include things like rubber band ligation, sclerotherapy, electrotherapy, and infrared coagulation. Rubber band ligation involves a band being placed around your piles to make them drop off. Both sclerotherapy and electrotherapy make your piles shrink. In sclerotherapy, you're injecting a liquid into them, and with electrotherapy, you're applying a gentle electric current. Infrared coagulation is a bit different, and this is where an infrared light is used to cut the blood supply to your piles, which then makes them shrink. You'll be awake for these type of treatments, but the area will be numbed. And you should be able to go home on the same day. If these treatments don't work, you may need surgery to remove your piles. 
So in those rare and severe cases when the problem won't go away, surgical removal might be on the cards. Now, this isn't your everyday surgery. It's typically reserved for large, painful, or stubborn hemorrhoids. In a stapled hemorrhoidopexy, your piles are stapled back inside your anus. In hemorrhoidal artery ligation, stitches are used to cut the blood supply to your piles and make them shrink. And when all else fails, there's the hemorrhoidectomy. This is a surgical procedure that involves the complete removal of hemorrhoids. It's like the grand finale of hemorrhoid treatments, but it does not mean that the hemorrhoids won't come back. You usually need to be asleep for these treatments and you may need to stay in hospital for more than a day. Let's move on to how we can keep those hemorrhoids in check and how we can lead a comfortable life with piles. Remember, prevention is often the best medicine. Lifestyle modifications such as regular exercise and avoiding prolonged sitting can go a long way in preventing hemorrhoids. And let's not forget about your diet. Consuming a high fiber diet can help keep your stool soft and regular, reducing the risk of straining during bowel movements. Stay hydrated. Drinking plenty of water helps to maintain soft stools and prevents constipation, which is a common trigger for hemorrhoids. On this note, it's also important to reduce your caffeine intake. So reduce coffee, tea, soft drinks that contain caffeine. This is because they can lead to dehydration and therefore make you more constipated. They can also make you go to the toilet more often, leading to irritation of the tissues and lining of your back passage. And don't underestimate the power of physical activity. Regular exercise not only keeps you fit, but also promotes healthy bowel movements. Finally, we're gonna finish this video with a quick list of do's and don'ts for the things that you can do to treat and prevent hemorrhoids. Do drink lots of fluid and eat plenty of fiber to help keep your poo soft. Don't wipe your bottom too hard after you poo. Do wipe your bottom with damp toilet paper. Do not ignore the urge to poo. Do take paracetamol if piles hurt. Do not push too hard when pooing. Do take a warm bath to ease itching and pain. Do not take painkillers that contain codeine as they can cause constipation. Do use an ice pack wrapped in a towel to ease discomfort. Do not take ibuprofen if your piles are bleeding. Do gently push a pile back inside. Do not spend more time than you need to on the toilet. Do keep your bottom clean and dry. Make sure you exercise regularly and cut down on alcohol and caffeine like tea, coffee and cola to avoid constipation. There you have it, this is your complete guide to hemorrhoids. Now, please do not self-diagnose and self-manage before you've consulted a clinician because lumps around the back passage could be something more sinister. And if you're bleeding, there can be many other causes of bleeding from your back passage. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more health-related content and hit that notification bell so that you never miss an update. I'm Dr. Suj, thanks for watching.